Good afternoon and welcome to Matters Financial and Geopolitical from a Frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Uh, my article, which is published separately, was titled Safe Havens Are Priced for Armageddon Now. And I'll just give you a little bit of a flavour. It's that the 21st century real time not only unfolds itself at the speed of light, but is full of mind-bending twists and turns. Jeffrey Epstein had a collection of eyeballs on his wall. The eyeballs make sense because Epstein was a watcher. Is it a coincidence that we all live in a watch and collect digital economy? Maybe, but we feast upon each other in the 21st century. I was talking about the frontier, the flight into safe havens, um, uh, it's on, published on YouTube as well, and then talking about how I think there's going to be a divergence between safe havens and emerging and frontier markets, unlike the last time when we had this global hunt for yield. Remember the consensus call for 2019, the renminbi and euro will soar versus the dollar and the US 10-year yield will rise above 3%. And of course, I was in a minority at the end of last year when I said the direction of the dollar is therefore pivotal, and that I'm increasingly in a minority, but I expect the dollar to strengthen about 10% in 2019. In that same article, I said if the US economy slows, I can guarantee you the rest of the world will slow further. Um, folks are keenly looking for chinks in the US economy, but if the US economy slows, I can guarantee you the rest of the world will slow further. This is the JPM Growth Forecast Revision Index, US, China, and the Euro. Thank you to Chiga. Global growth continues to slow, but US data is still strong. Why is it still doing so well? And it is because it's the most resilient, dynamic, and diversified economy in the world, with the world's lowest share of imports and exports to GDP. US, I said in July, is much more inward-facing um, than most other economies. This was interesting from Hayek and Keynes, price of goods tariffs versus non-tariffs. And this was something I wrote about in May when I said 80% of the tariff, tariff increase is going to be absorbed by the Chinese manufacturer and only 20% by the US consumer. And it looks as if that was correct. This is a, a map of the US yield curve from Holger and this goes back to a point I was making, that markets and prices exhibit patterns of correlation. And essentially, my perspective is that it is the correlation that has exerted a pull effect on US yields. And therefore, the recessionary signaling of the yield curve should be discounted. Home thoughts, I came across my favorite fruit. Uh, it's called Shocking Shocking here and it's really delicious except the photograph I've published, they're a little bit unripe. I like this Samuel Fosso Auto Portrait 1975 to 1978 via Aperture. This is Buddha. What you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine, you create. Um, of course, the very famous quote from out of Africa, I had a farm in Africa at the foot of the Ngong Hills. Isaac Dennison, Karen Blixen. And this is a picture of the Gong Hills in the 1950s from K Researcher. Up in this air, you breathed easily, drawing in a vital assurance and lightness of heart. In the highlands, you woke up in the morning and thought, here I am, where I ought to be. T-A-N Audio, in a podcast, the saga of the world's most expensive work of art, 
the $450 million sale. Um, this is a deep dive into the story of Salvatore Mundi. Uh, MBS, of course, is the owner of Leonardo da Vinci's Salvatore Mundi, which is a painting of Christ, uh, Savior of the world, dated to circa 1500. The painting shows Jesus in Renaissance dress, giving a benediction with his right hand raised and two fingers extended, while holding a transparent rock crystal orb in his left hand. The rock crystal orb, of course, appeared, reappeared during Trump's visit to the Desert Kingdom. It was sold for $450.3 million Christie's. And of course, Narrative had this long article about saying it was laundering hundreds of millions of dollars in full view of a global audience may not seem like the smartest move, but the facts support this may have been what the two crown princes and Dmitry Rybovlev tried to do. Its absolute inhumanity is the social bestiary of the immense biomass proletariat subsumed under logistical demands. Paul Virilio. Today, information is architecture by other means framing and contouring the relative motility of social intercourse. Political reflections, China missiles could overwhelm US military in Asia in hours, says an Australian think tank. Um, a decade of delayed and unpredictable funding for the US military's budget has seen America lose its primacy in the Western Pacific giving the edge to an increasingly sophisticated China. China's growing arsenal of accurate long-range missiles poses a major threat to almost all American allied and partner bases, airstrips, ports and military installations in the Western Pacific. These facilities could be rendered useless by precision strikes in the opening hours of a conflict the PLA missile threat challenges America's ability to freely operate its forces from forward locations throughout the region. I wrote about this in August 2017, China rising, and then again in 2018 when I said war is coming. Who needs democracy when you have data, MIT technology review? For any authoritarian regime, there is a basic problem for the center of figuring out what's going on at lower levels and across society. How do you effectively govern a country that's home to one in five people on the planet? Xi Jinping has strategy for understanding and responding to what is going on in a nation of 1.4 billion, relies on a combination of surveillance, AI and big data to monitor people's lives and behaviour in minute detail. Xi has called for cyber sovereignty to enhance censorship and assert full control over the domestic internet. In January, when he addressed the nation on television, the bookshelves on either side of him contain both classic titles, such as Das Kapital and a few new editions, including two books about artificial intelligence, Pedro Domingo's Master Algorithm and Brett King's Augmented Life in the Smart Lane. Now trains require national IDs to purchase tickets, which makes it easy for the authorities to identify potential troublemakers, such as those who protested against the government in the past. Um, new, uh, basically, information technology is a tool for making Chinese people more modern and more governable, which have been perennial obsessions of the leadership the social credit system, the cyber security law, um, smart city plans. The algorithm is thought to highlight suspicious behaviors such as visiting a mosque or owning too many books. Opacity of the system makes it difficult to evaluate how effective experiments are. 
The party has squeezed almost all critical voices since 2012. What information is available is deeply flawed, systematic falsification of data on everything from GDP to hydropower. Um, uh, in the western region of Xinjiang, which we've spoken about, and which is the laboratory experiment of this uh, uh, issue that technology is bringing up, the number of people taken into police custody has shot up dramatically, rising 731% from 2016 to 2017. The internet in China acts as a real-time, privately run digital intelligence service. A digital totalitarian state. People living under the system generally don't even know what the rules are. One in ten Uyghur or Kazakh adults in Xinjiang have been sent to barbed wire ringed re-education camps. Computer program aggregates all the data from these different sources and flags those who might become a threat to the authorities. It's an extraordinary situation. Here you see a Shanghai startup's demo of its system for facial recognition. In the city of Xinjiang, cameras linked to face recognition technology project photos of jaywalkers with names and ID numbers on a billboard. March 2018, I said China has unveiled a digital panopticon in Xinjiang. Descent is measured, snuffed out very quickly. China has unveiled a digital panopticon where a combination of data from video surveillance, face and license plate recognition, mobile device locations, official records to identify targets for detention. I said Xinjiang is surely a precursor for how the CCCP will manage dissent. Actions in Xinjiang are part of the regional authorities' ongoing strike-hard campaign and of President Xi's stability, maintenance and enduring peace drive in the region. A. Wei Wei, I don't think any prediction is too big. He was talking about uh, Hong Kong. Here you see protesters marching towards central Hong Kong after spilling out of Victoria Park, where tens of thousands of people have gathered under umbrellas as the rain poured down. 17th of June, I said the periphery is a boil that will not be lanced. And A Wei Wei again. China is a society which sacrifices anything to maintain its control. At the beginning of this demonstration two months ago, I already warned that the Chinese government eventually, if they cannot make this demonstration disappear, will use violence. There is no other way. They can't talk about the situation or negotiate. That's not a skill they have. All they have is the military and the police. Have a look at this link, Sky News, Trump, political genius, or just politically incorrect. Um, July, I was writing about Trump being a unique political phenomenon, otherwise he would not have parlayed his way to the White House. In that article, I was talking about him being a linguistic warfare specialist, crooked Hillary, lying Ted, little Marco, low energy Jeb, and saying that his linguistics derive from the world of wrestling. Um, in wrestling, as in literature, names are never neutral, naming a character is an essential part of creating them. There's always a face, short for baby face or hero, and a heel, a villain. Hulk Hogan and Dwayne the Rock Johnson are faces. Jake the Snake Roberts and Rick Rude are heels. Um, and then he uses this trope. Uh, lightweight Marco Rubio was working hard last night. The problem is he is a choker, and once a choker, always a choker. Melt down. And then uh, somebody I follow, MCM underscore CT, uh, sarcastically was saying when one is trading a thousand lots of S&P futures by a Goldman trading desk, front running tweets, then who cares about four hundred thousand dollars of salary? The PBOC's interest rate reform equals 45 basis points of a loan rate cut. That's an interesting development. 
and uh, the currency is at 705.35. Sterling ended a record run of losses against the common currency last week, um, had a tumultuous few weeks since Boris succeeded Theresa May with a promise to deliver Brexit on October the 31st, do or die. Um, in this article, saying the odds of Brexit by October is 41% from over 50% earlier this month. That's why you've had that little retracement, uh, little bounce in sterling. I wrote about sterling in August, uh, at the beginning of August, and I said, as I watched the pound fall like a stone, I could not help wondering if this sterling moment is precisely like that of 1992, a no-brainer. A very hagiographic article in the Australian by Toby Young, Boris Johnson, the man who invented himself. There was something of Nietzsche's ubermensch about him. You could imagine him wandering through the Black Forest with an axe over his shoulder, looking for ogres to kill. A reality distortion field, it's a superpower possessed by those rare individuals who come along once in a generation, combining bottomless self-belief, exceptional cognitive ability, and spellbinding charisma. Boris is one of those people. And I go back to my key question, which is, can Prime Minister Johnson self-eject Britain? Can he be stopped? And this is a political calculation. Uh, we are leaving the EU on October 31st. The signing of this document means we will take back control of, of our laws on Brexit there. He's seen Macron and Merkel this week. Currency markets, euro dollar back above 111 at 111.01, dollar index 98.17, Japanese yen 106.35, Swiss franc 0.9790, the pound, which was as high as 121.65, is now at 121.27, the Australian dollar, which has been Flatlining 0.6784, but I think it's going to fall again. India rupee 71.2775. South Korean won 12.11.275. The real above 4, 4.0063. Egyptian pound 16.5815. South African rand 15.2435. This is simple trends, dollar index. He says, this looks like a running correction to me still, and this should just go nuts soon. I don't do agree with that. Euro dollar, we pop back above 111. This is a chart from Forex Flow Live. I'm expecting a move below 110. Commodity markets, this is from T Commodity. We're at 15.08.35 cents. Gold, of course, has been extremely strong, up about 18% year to date. And it's the purest geopolitical proxy in the markets, as Ben Bernanke once said. Why do people hold gold as protection against what we call tail risks? Really, really bad outcomes. Oil holds gain after drone attack fails to disrupt Saudi output. Last at $55.50, up about 1.5%. UAE Dubai received 8.36 million visitors in the first half of 2019. In February 2014, as if Dubai is the real transit state, a connection point in an interconnected century. Signing complete, celebrations have begun nearly nine months to the day that anti-regime protests started in Atbara, River Nile State, on 19th December 2018. That's uh, regarding Sudan. Thousands of passengers travel nearly 300 kilometers from Atbara, where the first protests against al-Bashir erupted in December to the capital to celebrate the Sudan political agreement. I've written about Sudan severally. I called it the Oud Spring in July, in June. I said the zeitgeist of the revolution was intoxicating. As I watched events unfold, it felt the Sudan was a portal into a whole new normal. Hugh Masekela, I want to be there when the people start to turn it around. And I was saying Sudan is a Masekela pivot moment. 
In this photograph, Prime Minister Adi Ahmed arrives in Khartoum. Um, I recently wrote about Ethiopia in July, saying centrifugal forces are working against the mercurial Prime Minister Abiy's agenda in Ethiopia. July last year, I called him a virilian and Gladwellian figure, tapped into a Nelson Mandela mood circa 1994, all about speed and velocity. And Abiy has moved at lightning speed but the issue for Abiy remains the home front. President of Gabon appeared in public for the first time in 10 months. My friend Hervé says Bongo should be impeached on medical grounds. It's a no-brainer. Um, 21st of January, I told Al Jazeera what we're watching across this continent, whether it's Gabon, Sudan, or DR Congo. I should have added Zimbabwe, Chad, and Cameroon as a kind of tipping point moment. Zimbabwe, of course, is a laboratory experiment with inflation last clocking 176%. At the end of July, I said there is a straw and camel's back moment, but predicting that moment is always a fool's errand. This is Zim Media Review report on the demo by Haru Mutasa. The Zimbabwe police were here. This is from via Kobo 3. And really what was clear to me in January was that we were at a tipping point moment in Zimbabwe and I think we remain there. The point I'm seeking to make is that there is a correlation between high inflation and revolutionary conditions. And I take you back to October when the government's voodoo economics spent a billion three dollars pump priming the economy ahead of the election, money it did not have, and that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Mood darkens in Tanzania as President Magafuli silences his critics. This is the Times. Tanzania has become a land of horrors in recent years. We have descended into the kind of obnoxious dictatorial regime we thought was a thing of the past. Um, UK provided aid worth £153 million, pounds. US gave more than $500 million. I've never stopped calling out his abuses of his government, and even though I'm the president's public enemy number one, I'm not going to stop now. Uh, there is no doubt Tanzania has a lot to offer tourists with many places of spectacular natural beauty. But perhaps tourists thinking of coming to enjoy them should reflect on whether they really would like to endorse such a sinister and autocratic regime. Jeffrey Smith, Tanzania Magafuli have serious bot game. The instant you tweet about the latest attack on press freedom, the jailing of a critic, or the most recent assault on democracy, one's account is instantly bombarded by egg people and accounts with one or zero, or zero or one followers, impressive. US-China trade war hits Africa's cobalt and copper mines with 4,400 jobs expected to vanish. US-China trade war partly to blame for Glencore's move to shut a cobalt mine in the DR Congo and copper mining shafts in Zambia, with the probable loss of about 4,400 jobs. Um, this mine, one-fifth of the world's metal, uh, uh, paid $600 million in taxes last year, or one-tenth of the Congolese government's budget. Price of cobalt has plunged from more than $90,000 per tonne early last year to about $28,000 per tonne, according to the London Metal Exchange. Copper tumbled from a high of $6,555 per tonne in February to about $5,700 per ton now. Um, I've written about the several ways that China has exerted the power of pull over a vast swathe of the world over the last two decades. We can call it the China, Asia, EM and Frontier Markets feedback loop. This feedback loop has been largely positive one for the last two decades, with the one remember now in retreat, surely exerts serious downside pressure on those countries in the feedback loop. Purest proxy for the China, Asia, EM and Frontier Markets feedback loop phenomenon is the South African Rand. South African all shares up 2.16% year to date, dollar Rand at 15.2370, Egyptian pound steady 
uh, EGX30 up 10.46% year to date, bucking the trend in Africa. Nigerian all share down 14.335%. Ghana Stock Exchange down 7.52% year to date. Kenya is hoping to benefit from the current standoff between India and Pakistan to push the 16% share in New Delhi supplies to Karachi. This is about tea. We would like to use this AMPAS to further our tea exports to Pakistan as Kenya stands to benefit from this standoff. India supplies $30 million of tea to Pakistan every year. Whereas Kenya might benefit in volumes, the earnings could be lower as the Pakistan rupee has of late been losing value against the dollar. The Kenya shilling is down 1.5% year to date, price terms not factoring in the carry. Nairobi all shares up 7.81% year to date, trading on a price earnings ratio of 11.3 and a dividend yield of 5.3. The NSE 20 is down 10.37% year to date. Thank you for stopping by.